But first, uh, having listened to the presentations or, or the talks from ITBN and Nottingham, I do have some questions uh, for the university leaders here, the ITBN UON, and also representing some of the representing universities in this room. What do you see in terms of research collaboration, things that we have to focus on in terms of research collaborations between UK and Indonesia? I know uh, there are some mentions about uh, ships being uh, needed to be restored, uh, but in terms of your roles as a university leader, what should be the focus of research collaboration be? Uh, first, uh, perhaps uh, for Dr. Putri, the okay. microphone is there on behalf of ITB, please. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, one one of our vision during uh, these four years, our focus in research is how to develop uh, research culture in our community. That's the best, uh, that's the most uh, vision for our institution. So everything regarding research, including the research collaborations, it means that uh, our leaders hope that this activity will uh, develop the research uh, culture for our community. That's the thing. Thank you very much. The same question to you, Shia. Um, thank you. I, I do think that one thing that brings us together are, for lack of a better word, sustainable development goals. And if you look at the priorities of the Indonesian government or the UK government, it's about solving global challenges or addressing global challenges. And, and I think that the networks and activities we've had so far have been very much focused on, on some of those challenges. So I think that's what we look at. And, and I think that the comment earlier, I think that some are made about impact, that, that we want to work collaboratively in an interdisciplinary way on research that is going to have a positive impact on society. Well, thank you. Do you want to chip in, Summer? There's yeah. another microphone oh, there. Okay. Um, if I may, yes, um, thank you. Um, because uh, last week we had um, some colleagues from our department for, um, so it's called BASE, so Department for Business, Energy and um, uh, 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 Industry Strategy. Yes, it's always a mouthful. Um, so, so they are the department in the UK that manages um, or, you know, that delivers the um, Newton Fund. So we had them out here. We organized a session with the Newton Fund alumni that we have been working with over the last eight years. And one of the questions we asked them is, why Indonesia? You know, Newton Fund operates in many other countries worldwide. Why Indonesia? You know, what's the, what, what, why is it so important here? And I think it became very clear, as um, you know, both colleagues have mentioned. I think through the project we have supported, we can see that the real issues Indonesia is trying to address and then where the UK has a lot of experience in dealing with that, such as disaster management, such as climate change, such as, um, you know, green economy. So I think that's where the match is made in heaven um, in the sense that, you know, lots of, um, you know, Indonesian partners talked about the struggle they have from their community, from their cities, from their provinces. And then they look to the UK because they have read about what the UK's researchers have done. So I think that's a great link. And it's a win-win situation because through the research, I think the um, Indonesian partners are able to address some real issues and commercialize the research that will make it more viable and sustainable. And at the same time, it provides great um, data and specimen, as you mentioned, Dr. Bagus, to the UK colleagues to be able to work together and then, you know, test some, out some of the theories. So I think that's what binds us together. And that's what I think, you know, back to what Professor West has said, is sustainable because it's addressing real issues benefiting real communities. And then that's how we can make science and research live and relevant to everyday lives. Thank you. Let me shamelessly promote my own research interest here um, in regards to what you just said, <laughs> because uh, you said it's a match made in heaven because uh, I, I do a little bit about uh, geothermal research and then sitting beneath our feet is over 50% of the world's uh, geothermal reserves. And then the UK has 
the likes of British Geological Survey, which is the oldest geological uh, institutions in the world. And then, you know, the, this is uh, some areas where the two countries can work together. Now, segueing into you, uh, uh, Wisnu, I would like to, because we have uh, these research collaborations that both company country has the appetite for collaboration, but what do you see as facilitators of stronger research? The challenges that's facing in your role, Indonesia, in order to make stronger research collaborations with the UK. Thank you very much, Agus. Uh, so, uh, from the Indoman uh, Fund situation like LPDPs, we are strongly uh, support and facilitate the fund. And then about the topics itself, is uh, depend on the. Uh, I think this should be a lot aligns with the uh, national. Uh, Men's uh, agenda in Indonesia, and also we uh, with the uh, uh, priority of each university. So I think uh, the, uh, as uh, the PMO Project Management Office is under the Directorate General of Higher Education, we cooperate, uh, coordinating with uh, the Director General to select with the topics which have a uh, national impact, mm. priority impact for the national agenda. And then the topic itself or the research itself depend on the its uh, university and the, uh, the researchers. I think that. I see. I see. For for those who are, it's been on the slides before, but the RISPRO UKCHIS that the LPDP had kindly facilitated for, a uh, focus on the five research areas: the green economy, blue economy, digital technology, health, and sustainable tourism. And this is in line with the national priorities as also uttered by President Joko Widodo. And so, um, please prepare some of your questions, uh, but I do have another follow-up questions to the university uh, leaders here. What do you see in terms of your role in the globally more and more connected world uh, in, from a yeah, representative from Indonesian universities and from the representative from the UK universities? What do you see as your roles, particularly in regards to addressing challenges such as what you have mentioned before, climate change, pandemic, natural disasters? Perhaps this time from you, Shadow, first. Okay, that's a big question. Um, I, I think our role as leaders is to facilitate the opportunities for collaboration among our researchers because we're, we're not the ones doing it. <laughs> Our colleagues are doing it. And, and I do feel that we're in a very complicated world now, but we do know that, that the best researchers working with the best researchers, wherever they happen to be, are, are going to produce the best um, science. So I, I think that, that we need to facilitate as leaders and, and make sure that we can break down the barriers. Thank you very much. The same questions to you. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I, I guess in ITB, we have one uh, research center uh, doing with uh, for natural uh, disaster and also for climate. Uh, and for some uh, years, our leaders is very concerned about the climate change. And uh, the leaders support that this research should also what uh, should also to include uh, some technology. So as we know that uh, as far as we have data, so we can uh, we can do some what we can include some uh, technology for analyze the data. But uh, for ITB itself, climate change is one big issue for the research proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, certainly to address these big questions, climate change, uh, we just had this pandemic, you need to accelerate innovations that enables you to tackle these challenges. And some of the uh, problems that I see, and this is also relevant questions to you, uh, I know later is how do you change or even expedite translation of research into innovation? Because without the innovation, without the product like Genos, uh, one of our own uh, products to uh, determine the infection of uh, COVID-19, you wouldn't really get the real impact. How do you accelerate research to innovation? Okay, thank you very much. 
uh, in Indonesia now uh, uh, the Endowment Fund for Research the LPDP has uh, partners like Green Indonesia Research Innovation uh, Agency we share the uh, the function of the with the Green in the LPDPs we try to develop research for development that means that we try to now uh, not uh, start with the research come from the researchers we try to now uh, in, at least in uh, at least even one or two years we try to uh, make another uh, models of uh, fa- research funding we connect the industry first we call uh, we uh, have a communication with the industry first what's the their real problem with the technology and with uh, the industry we develop the term of reference and then we try uh, and then after that we uh, make a call for proposals to the university or research institution who, we, uh, uh, who will have um, the technology can help the industry means we try to start from the end start from the industry and back to the the science uh, maybe in the brain uh, research in the, uh, in the national research institution uh, agency uh, start research from the research but uh, lbdb now sharing the function with the uh, uh, university and the research institution we start from the the need the industrial need the user Yeah, Brin is conveniently translated into UKRI straightforwardly. Here is like uh, a UK research and innovation agency, um, right? So, uh, learning from you mentioned quite conveniently about your attempt, perhaps Indonesia's attempt to expedite translation from research to innovation uh, from the UK, and I could perhaps um, see you as a representative from the UK body, being British uh, Council. What are the best uh, practices that you can share? And this is also to you as well, uh, Shearer. Uh, from the university and from British Council, what do you see the UK uh, have done in terms of translating research into innovation that perhaps can be shared to the Indonesian audience? Perhaps to Shearer first? Um, just quickly, uh, research is a complex ecosystem and, and you need people doing research that's not going to quickly go to innovation as well as what you're talking about. But I think that um, working early in collaboration with industry is one of the ways of achieving this. And I think you were alluding to that as well. So not just what industry is looking for to solve their problems, but the research teams working closely with them as partners um, from an early stage of the research is one of the good ways to accelerate the innovation. Early start with the industry. Yeah, I, I would very much echo that. And I think in addition, perhaps to that industry link, is also thinking about the communities that you represent. I think that's particularly relevant for Indonesia. So the early example I mentioned, you know, when I spoke to this researcher about this app that he's developing for the fisherman, because he's like, well, I come from a fishing village. You know, lots of my families and friends, they go out without knowing whether they will make it back safely or not. And then that inspired me that wanting to develop an app that will allow them to go out and come back safely. So I think that's addressing a real issue that the community faces. So I think, you know, coupled with the industry link, I think that makes it, you know, easier to translate the research into some uh, something that's of commercial value and something that will be, you know, of um, popularity and uh, real benefits to the um, society as well. And then maybe I can just build on that in terms of, you know, what we can do as institutions, organizations, and, um, you know, funding partners to enable that. Um, I think um, there's something also about sharing lessons learned and sharing best practice on a a multi-country forum so that, you know, lots of the, for example, issues are faced by several Southeast Asian countries in the context of ASEAN. So I think it's useful to, you know, bring people together and then look at the co-creation in addition to the bilateral relationship that we already have through the UK Indonesia research collaboration, but bringing other partners in from like-minded, um, you know, countries. Um, so you mentioned earlier, there's a, 
um, I, uh, uh, or Dr. Reno mentioned, there's a German partner that might come in as well. So I think that's interesting. And then because some of the challenges are faced, uh, you know, by several countries. Um, the other thing I think, again, that will support this, um, you know, translation is to have strong monitoring and evaluation. And then to think about that from the outset and also develop the capacity of monitoring and evaluation, you know, within the researchers, because sometimes that is perhaps, you know, not given enough emphasis. So I think that's something else really important to set out right from the start. Um, and I think also, um, there is, I think going back to one point I made, targeting emerging researchers. So right from day one, you know, as they, you know, sort of finish their master's or PhD and then start their research journey, I think that's when they need most of the support in terms of networking, in terms of know-how. So I think that what we can do to develop their capacity and then create platforms for them to link and learn from others, I think that will give them a head start as they start their um, research um, journey. Thank you. Shira said something about engaging industry early. You mentioned about engaging communities, and yeah. particularly relevant in the Indonesian setting. Always know, do you think uh, in the future LTDP programs that you could also have industries joining in or community uh, groups or organizations joining in in the same platform as the likes of RISPO UTGs? Yes, I think uh, we can develop that uh, the concept of the triple helix, something like that, the triple helix, the community of South and the, the industry. We try to uh, now with uh, Newton Fund, uh, try to early talk about how we can co-funding the project with the Newton Fund means that or the or the philanthropists can join us. The government of Indonesia have a lot of money, and then we have to share with another. I mean, that another source of funding means that with the big amount, we can attract uh, as uh, their their uh, co-funding. Mm -hmm. And also with the industry itself, I mentioned <coughs> the industry is not getting for free; they have to share the resources and the, the funding itself. I mean that maybe 60-40, 60 by the LPDP is 40 the industry or 50-50. So we try to uh, attract Indonesian industry and the community yeah. to develop uh, research funding. Yeah, And then with the industry and the government um, and, uh, offer the super deduction tax. So the, if the industry is, uh, spend uh, some uh, money for the research, they can get uh, tax deduction mm. or the, we call super reduction tax, I means that the attractive, the, uh, the fiscal and the financial incentive for the industry and maybe the community, uh, if they can sharing with in, can, in kind or in cash. Yeah. We, we, we try to develop the new innovation uh, environment, ecosystem. I see sharing resources as well as sharing risks, actually. Yes, of course, the risk. Right, because it is a risky enterprise, research is. Um, in the UK, don't we have something like this? Yeah, something like Innovate UK, wouldn't it? Yes, it's part of the um, UK Research and Innovation. There's a separate organization called Innovate UK that, that, that really does encourage the university business links. I, I would say that just on the point you just made that um, research is always a surprise and no research program or project ever comes out with what it's thought it would at the beginning. And it's usually better, but it's always different yeah. <laughs> because as you conduct the research, you know, you, you discover things that you didn't expect. So I just thought it's worth mentioning that. Right. It is, it is, it is. And it, to your point before you said evaluation, mm. but this is a risky enterprise. You wouldn't know what exactly you're getting. How do you measure research? How do you evaluate research? In terms of impact. How do you make sure the people know British Council project successful? Okay. What so are I, the metrics? I think, I think there are two questions there. One is about monitoring and evaluation. I think there's a you know a way to set up you know all the indicators and then looking at the impact, the citation, and you know the translation value, the commercial value. So I think there is you know that side which I think uh, there's more that we can do in terms of developing that capacity. The second question is actually another point I wanted to make. How do we know if the the, the um, projects are successful? I think in addition to the monitoring evaluation, the real you know translation commercial value, 
It's about the communication. Because sometimes I feel we don't have enough visibility of the fantastic researches that the scientists and researchers have done. Like I say, during the gathering session last week, I learned more than I probably read in the last five years about the research collaboration between Indonesia and the UK. And I was really inspired and thought, how can we get these stories out there? You know, how these researchers are supporting real communities. So I think there is a bit about how we can get researchers or organizations to be able to communicate and tell the compelling story. And the British Council used to run a competition called Fame Lab. Um, so this is basically we ask the young researchers to the stage, give them three minutes and then explain their research and all a very, you know, difficult, um, uh, complex um, a scientific topic to the audience to get the message across, you know, such as, you know, nanotechnology or artificial intelligence. So I think it, it was really inspiring to see that because then once the audience get it, once the you know general public get it, then there's more buy in and more support. So I think that's the part that we could help researchers do in terms of capacity building so that, you know, they are changing lives and change, making the world a better place. And it's our role to promote that and then inspire more people. Thank you. Great answer. We already have a buy in from the audience right now. So uh, I see Professor Fasli Jalal in the audience from Universitas Yarsi. Uh, please, can you uh, tell us uh, who your questions are addressed to? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bagus. Uh, as mentioned before, I'm from Yarsi University and I'm the president of the university. I would like to ask all of you, right now, close one to four of Indonesian children are stunting which will affecting the uh, emo social development and intellectual development and productivity. And also they are very prone to non-communicable diseases later on. So the president has chaired the special committee on addressing stunting because the, the cause of stunting is multi, multi dimension from poverty, from uh, behavior communication, lack of the good behavior and from availability of food, uh, nutritious food and also the uh, parenting, the parenting uh, quality of the household. So I'm now chairing the consortium of 280 universities in Indonesia, helping the 314 uh, local government to reduce the prevalence of something. So then from policy financing, the institutional setting is quite okay right now, but we are lack on the research support uh, from genomic who are really prone on the, to become standing. And then from the uh, community point of view, uh, what kind of the indicator can be developed together with community? And then what kind of effective intervention to be provided by different layer of government and different sector involved. Because right now, 23 minister responsible in their own portfolio. And for ITB, for example, because the, we have two prong of approach. One, what we call nutrition sensitive intervention, which is 70% of the result coming from this. And then nutrition specific intervention, which is the traditional uh, nutrition, uh, you know, uh, program, which is held by Ministry of Health. But for water and sanitation and hygiene and behavior of the community in using water and sanitation is now is one of the most problematic right now. Can the ITB, because ITB so far is not joining this uh, big consortium by university, IPB already, UE already, yeah, uh, Gajah Mada. But ca can we orchestrate this, and especially for Pak Wisnu, how come the research funding from LPDP can also support if we map out what kind of research agenda needed and who does what and for what particular objective? And then in the regard, can the UK join this? Because we can start from genomic, you know, from the uh, cellular aspect, we can go to the uh, health services, 
in the hospital and the community health sector and then from public health point of view. But I mm -hmm. think the most important thing is uh, uh, what we call BCC, Behavior Change Communication, which is also multi-sector. Thank you. Thank you. There's a salient point there from Professor Fasli Jalal, perhaps for share. So this stunting, or in the UK, we commonly call, we call it failure to thrive, right? It's a common, very single, uh, often singled out by the president himself as a prevalent uh, problem in Indonesia. The questions I think is pretty clear. So perhaps from ITB uh, and for the rest of the panelists, uh, what, what, what can we do about it in regards to stronger UK-Indonesia collaborations? Would you like to start, uh, Ibu Putri? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Jalal. Yeah, our rector has uh, identified this issue. Uh, she mentioned in several meetings uh, how important that uh, ITB contribute in the what stunting uh, problems. And as far as uh, I know, one of our school that is a school of uh, school of life science and technology has been pointed out by our uh, rector uh, as a leader for these problems. And I know that uh, I think from for, uh, for the fund of 2022, uh, our rector has uh, give more attention uh, regarding the funds uh, for ITB to help uh, this problem. And of course, uh, we we very, very delight to join uh, with UK to really focus for this problem together. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's obviously a huge problem and and I think I would say two things, one general and one specific. The general one is that this is exactly the kind of issue where you need social scientists. Uh, we've been talking a lot about technology and innovation, but you, but you need a lot of social science input into this. But having said that, I, I also want to sort of make a note that my colleague, Louise, who's here, it has been working with uh, midwifery programs uh, in Indonesia. And I know that this is an issue that that's part of the conversation that you're having with your colleagues in other universities. I don't know if you want to say anything about it. There's a microphone there, Louise. If you yeah, thank you. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, so I am midwifery and I've been working with midwives across Indonesia for a, a number of years now. And one of the issues that came up during the June visit was around stunting. We did used to call it um, failing to thrive. We've now got a new terminology of faltering growth within the UK. But obviously within the World Health Organization, they do refer to it as stunting. And I think there's lots of work, as, as we've been saying, it, it's actually got to be a collaboration of a number of different professions. But I think midwifery is going to play a huge part in this, because if we care for the health and well-being of our women, whilst they're nurturing and growing their babies, um, then we, we can actually have babies born that are a good weight and babies are a good weight and then are fed properly in their early years, then that those are the things that we need to use. But quite possibly it is about um, education. Um, we have we come all of us with a culture, cultural background where sometimes now that that doesn't necessarily help with with babies thriving and, and growing and developing as they should. So there is a lot of work that we need to be doing um, across a number of professions that we can come together. And there's one project that um, we'd started with Erlanger of putting together an education program that would help with mothers to help um, um, tackle stunting. And um, once we know we've got that funding, then hopefully we'll be able to take that forward. But if anybody wants to come speak to me um, about this, um, then please do. Thank you, Louis. Thank you very much. Uh, Wisnu, would you like to chip in on the something? Thank you, Pastor Jalal. It's my, my senior. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, today uh, the fund from LBDP is funded by the BRIN. It's about 400 billion. You can direct go to uh, BRIN, right? And as because they are every two months, usually they open for 
call for proposals. The system is a merit system. Yeah, the proposal should be uh, reviewed by reviewer, and if the pass, you can get the funding for your, your proposal. But we can talk later, Pak. Habis ini. Please stay, please stay, Pak. Yeah, I mean that uh, the 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 endowment fund for the research. Uh, invest by LPDP, but uh, the using of the running the program is Brin. Okay. okay. Yeah, but uh, you can uh, talk with Brin and also with LPDP that we have another source of the money. I think that's all. Okay. Thank you very much, Mawisnu. Uh, we have in the audience a Miss Prodita from the Conversation Indonesia, editor in chief and CEO. Please. Hello. Good morning, uh, everyone. I first of all, I would like to say. Congratulations for this wonderful, wonderful initiative. Thank you. Um, uh, at the conversation, uh, we are part of like the intermediary within the research ecosystem. Uh, I was sitting here and also thinking about um, this idea of making sure that the research that has been carried out through this research collaboration can be communicated to the public. Um, I was I was about to ask uh, in the panel, um, the, the panelists were talking about monitoring and evaluation and making sure that there's early talks with um, industries from the start. And then uh, Pat Summer mentioned about making sure that the communicating of the research is carried out as well. And um, I want to, um, from the conversation, I want to say that we would love to be part of this um, initiative and be part of um, the, the activities of communicating research out there to the public. And I want to, well, ask um, within each organizations uh, uh, for all the people um, sitting there, uh, how, uh, how big is the investment, I guess, the investment and uh, priority to make sure that communication is part of research activity? So that's uh, mm -hmm. my question. Thank it's you. a very good point. Before I give it to the panelists, I just want to announce that the RISPRO UKGS will be collaborating with the conversation so that for every research uh, produced through this funding, uh, we will try to make sure at least that the community gets to know what this is all about at the minimum at the maximum to get actually the translation of its research into the betterment of their well-being. Ah, the question is a, a good one. So what are the level of investment? Perhaps from ITB first, I think it's relevant to all of you uh, in regards to uh, ensuring there is a communication element in that. Thank you. Mm. Uh, the question is really what hit me very hard because uh, is your question is about research. Honestly, uh, I have to tell that at the moment, I, ITB hasn't been put uh, some funding for research and communication. But as uh, leaders, we do aware and also we not only aware, we struggle with the issue of communication. So uh, our leader has put some uh, fund for hire a consultant to help us for doing a good communication. So uh, we haven't been thinking about the research, but maybe I will point Mr. Rino because he's, uh, he is in charge for, for uh, determine the research topic for every year. So I think uh, this may, <laughs> may be a good, because maybe as an engineer, most of us as, uh, are engineers, so sometimes we, take for granted about communication. So we think that everything uh, solved by mechanics, uh, tools, something like that. But when uh, we, for me, uh, actually before I'm uh, appointed by rector as a vice rector, I'm just an ordinary lecturer. And my background is in informatica. You know informatica is we just talking about uh, machine, something like that. And uh, the first years when I was uh, doing my duty, I struggle with communication. So sometimes uh, we have some policy uh, and it has been go through the community and uh, this very, very struggling for us. So 
thank you very much. So we will pay more attention for communication regarding this. Thank you. Thank you very much, please. Um, first of all, the, the conversation is a very powerful platform to reach out to the public. So I appreciate the collaboration that, that you've offered with UTIS. We do think a lot about communication in the UK. Um, our UKRI, our research funding body, expects um, it, uh, researchers to reach out to the public in a variety of ways. Um, our communications team within the university has a, a, a very strong focus on research communication. And we even have an Institute of Policy and Engagement in, in Nottingham, which is designed to help build the capability of our staff, our researchers to communicate their work, um, which is, you know, kind of overcoming some of the problems you're talking about. If, if you're a, specialist in one area, you're not necessarily, a, a, communications is not your thing. So um, I just think it's very important and just want to thank you for um, for bringing it up. The same question. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think with the, the conversation, LBDB has uh, more than one conversation, I think. We had a talk about uh, it before because as a public uh, organization, we have to responsible for the public as uh, using the public funding. So I will support uh, everything about uh, the news or the, uh, the result. And usually we put in our website um, to be reached by everybody. And also uh, some, well, some occasion we uh, invite the conversation to uh, to make the uh, result of the, our research will be uh, can uh, reach to the community. I, 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 I agree with you, and then we can uh, our communication. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, um, just to say, from our <coughs> excuse me, from our experience, I think the various arrangements between the different delivery partners of Newton Fund and also the different activities. But I feel that there's always more that we can do. And also, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's about bring it to life. You know, so I think sometimes we focus a lot on the um, quantitative data. You know, I think it's more of the qualitative data that, you know, sort of the real stories that will touch people. So I think that's where we can focus more. And then that's what we as an organization, the British Council, want to do more. So it's great that, you know, the conversation is offering this opportunity. So um, right now we are looking at impact stories from the last eight years from managing Newton funds. So I would love to participate, you know, collaborate with you and um, in the conversation and then bring to life some of our researchers. I mean, they talk passionately about what they do far better than I can explain. So I think it's about giving them the spotlight and then showing how they are helping their communities and making this world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, connecting with the uh, broader audience is very important. I do from time to time utilize my Instagram for that purpose. So please do. <laughs> All right, that's my segue. Uh, we do have time for uh, one more question from the audience, and then I see. Uh, please, could you first introduce yourself, Baba? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so I'm Arif Al-Sam. I'm the Dean of the Medicine, just in Indonesia. Yes. Yeah, so just uh, for information, until now, I think we have uh, collaboration with uh, Nottingham and also uh, Coventry. Uh, and also, uh, my researcher have uh, got uh, Newton Fund before. Uh, research about the fung fungal in Indonesia. Um, my my question to uh, Pak Wisnu in LBDP, uh, we actually we have a program that we call double degree programs for undergrad. Uh, our student can get MD from us and then uh, get a, a master of research from uh, Newcastle, UK and um, Bachelor of Science, uh, Mornes and uh, Mornes and Melbourne. And also we have a double program for uh, specialist residency. Uh, they got uh, specialist from us and uh, got a master research from Melbourne. So uh, the question is, uh, it is possible to, uh, to our student can get scholarship from LPDP, uh, especially for uh, taking degree from abroad, like from Newcastle, or maybe we, 
actually we start to uh, make uh, to talk about the double degree with the Coventry for uh, uh, for our PhD programs or something something like that. So uh, it is important. I mean, it, it is possible if uh, LPDP can support uh, these programs, especially just for for uh, taking a degree from abroad uh, university. Please, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Usually, uh, LPDPs have, uh, since 2010 and to not now, we have called the scholarship for the master and PhD degree only, what we call the native program of the LPDPs. But start from 2020 with the Ministry of Education, Culture, and Research Technology, we have another you call a uh, program Merdeka Belajar or ISMA, something like that. So uh, this, uh, the requirement for the LPDP is uh, the student should be master or, uh, for the PhD or should be uh, have a S1 in Indonesia for the get a master degree. Uh, but we have to say that uh, uh, what they are means that they start from the beginning, not uh, continuing of, uh, give uh, scholarship, continuing uh, you could uh, start from master one year and then you ask for another year, one year. Usually we start from the beginning for the master and the PhD. And uh, you can also read the requirement, the condition in the, our website, huh? because I'm not, I uh, didn't one by one, but uh, for the double degree means as long as uh, meet the requirement for the condition of the LBDP, you can uh, have a, a communication with us. But usually we give the master and the PhD. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we have only that much time to cover uh, such a wide ranging topic. I'd like to try to bring the thread of the discussions together. Uh, we have discussed uh, identifying research focus to collaborate between the UK and Indonesia, we have established that we do have some really, we, we use the term a match made in heaven, as you said, really, because it's really complementary what the UK and Indonesia has. And then we have talked a little bit about provision of funding to promote this research partnership. We talk about monitoring and evaluation. We talk about the importance of communicating our research and its impact to the broader, broader audience. And we have talked about some uh, uh, important issues like stunting. We're talking about many different things, um, but it's certainly not enough. And the UK CHIS is one that aims to become as inclusive of an organization as, as possible. And so attending with us here are other UK CHIS members um, and also non-members, the new members and soon to be members <laughs> in the future. So um, with that, I would like to first close this discussion session. And uh, please give a round of applause to all of our panelists. And uh, as I uh, welcome.